just want to know, traveling through the streets of East New York, I used to look at all these bad new buildings. And I used to always say to myself, if I could get me one of those buildings, you know, from the city or just move in one, I would fix it up and I would live in that building. I used to always say, well, all these houses are empty and nobody in them. You know? I said, if I could just move into one and just fix it up and just stay there, I would do it. Because there's so many buildings. And they just, they're just sitting here, you know. And I figured it would help the city, it would help to get the streets cleaned up and uh, our neighborhood would look better. It's good for the community and it's good for the person that has the courage to do it. As New York City continues to grow and flourish daily, many surrounding areas are slowly fading away. East New York is only a short subway ride from downtown Manhattan and at one time was far removed from the crimes of the city. Once this Brooklyn community, with its rows of small one and four family houses, offered people the opportunity to obtain low-cost housing in a safe neighborhood. But East New York, along with many other Brooklyn communities, has declined over the past two decades as the problems of the inner city have crept into the outer boroughs. The strains of changing economic and social conditions are taking their toll on this hard-pressed neighborhood. Residents who want to raise families must now struggle with these problems and with a community that is slowly crumbling. Some landlords and homeowners have found the burden and cost too high and have fled from East New York. Others have been forced by financial hardship to abandon their houses. Subsequently, HPD, the city's Department of Housing, Preservation and Development, has become the owner of most of the abandoned real estate in East New York. Yet there are still people who strive amid the rundown houses and stores to try to reclaim their neighborhood. This is a neighborhood that has been deteriorating for the last 10 or 12 years. The city has done nothing about uh, trying to keep these buildings livable for people. The crime element has uh, elevated upon us. We are about trying to, to, to alleviate ourselves of the crimes in this, in this, in this community. We are trying to, to better the condition as, uh, as far as sanitation as far. We are trying also to see that the city make these abandoned buildings livable, that people may have some place to live. The situation is just a very desperate one. You're talking about over 6,000 abandoned buildings city-wide, more than 2,500 of them in East New York alone. People just don't have a decent and affordable place to live. We have no other alternative except to try and force the city's hand by opening buildings up, by going inside with teams of people to make the repairs, to make the premises livable for, for families and for individuals. There's just no other choice. But once we take that, I Step one was I, what I did, I broke out all the old ceiling, and now I'm getting ready to insulate the ceiling, and we're going to put the sheetrock back on the beam. But that's the main important thing that I must do. I must insulate the ceiling because this come directly from the roof to keep all the cold air out. So I'm going to put the insulation back, and then we're going to put the ceiling back with nail the sheetrock next to the, to the beams, and that make the room nice and warm. Everything I'm doing in this house is legal. When it comes down to gas and light, and so I'm not stealing gas or light. Ernestine Ross is a 56-year-old custodian for a Brooklyn public school. With the help of her family, friends, and neighbors, she is rehabilitating an abandoned city-owned building. Why should a house like this sit here and just people from the street come in and use the basement and the doors all be knocked down and human waste in the house and stuff like that? I mean, that, that's terrible. I came in here to improve the, the, the block instead of destroying it. Use it for just something that even not even worth why destroying other people's lives as well. I had people to work with other people, just not only me just doing it, but other people uh, involved and interested also in doing the same thing. Like we came in one big family group. And I thought that was nice too, because each person could encourage the other person or uh, what they're doing. You know, like if one person would do something and then you wouldn't feel right because you just feel just it's just only me, or well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But since it's other people too, you know that it, uh, I feel real good about it. It's just not only me doing it. And you have the junkies, everybody coming into the building, right? And when uh, this building could be repaired and people could live in it, when you pay the city a hotel of five, six hundred dollars a week, just keep people that haven't got nowhere to live, and then you could have these houses fit, repaired. Uh, I would call a squatter those who live in a building and don't pay, don't do anything, yes? You know, legally not paying taxes, not paying anything, but she's paying something. She's putting in money in this, you know. So it's not that she's going to live in the building and not doing anything to it. If in a case like that, it was different. But I mean, she's going into the building and she is uh, putting money in, into the building. And she's been working hard all her life. Yeah. She 
work for the Board of Education, school and staff. You think it's good what she's doing with the neighborhood? You think yeah. It's yeah. Yeah, it is because, I mean, who wants a building abandoned next to them? So what do you think about Mrs. Ross moving in next door to you and cleaning oh, up that? I love it. I enjoy it. I thank God for her. I really do. You don't mind living next door to a squatter then? <laughs> she ain't not. <laughs> oh, she not nothing like that. She's a nice person. And a Christian person. And a hard working person. Although Miss Ross has been threatened with eviction, she continues to work on her house. Not only people my age, a lot of younger people would be very interested in doing that. And it's encouraging for them to do, too, because they have something to look forward for. Because I feel like we there's a lot of crime that uh, most of our young people don't have anything to look forward to doing. You know what I'm saying? They have something where they'll say, well, I can take this and fix it, and this is mine, this is for my mother. Because we have a lot of uh, good... Uh, men out here that's willing to work and want to do something, but they don't have the opportunity. They don't know how to go by doing it. And I'm the one to get out here and help them do it. Because I'll be working right with them. That's right. If they want to do it, I'm with them 100%. Because I love doing things like that. They don't bother me one way or the other. As long as they start working, don't wait till I get too old now. Let it get started quick. You feel <laughs> great about this house? I like feel this? great about it. You feel like this is your hometown? Yes. When I, once I put my furniture in here, this is mine. And you see it's in here, right? Well, uh, squatting is a major problem to us. Uh, we definitely oppose squatting, and we just will not condone it wherever it is. As a city would have people to believe that we are uh, doing illegal, something illegal and something radical out here. We are not about breaking laws. We are about trying to find a decent place for someone to live. The squatters are being aided and supported by ACORN, the Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now, which has promoted legal homesteading programs in other major cities. The squatters are people from East New York who joined this organization because they wanted to improve their community. ACORN organized the squatting movement in East New York to pressure the city government to provide housing for low-income families and to persuade the city to broaden its homesteading programs. But the city viewed the actions that ACORN and the squatters were taking in this Brooklyn neighborhood as unlawful and charged them with illegal entry and trespassing. In the fall of 1985, the city took the squatters to court. Well, originally, after a year, incidentally, of trying to persuade the city to do something about the abandonment problem, begging, pleading with them to do something, we just decided to take matters into our own hands. A lot of the people living in East New York are extremely determined. They're skilled. They have abilities to fix up houses. So one by one, we began going into, into the buildings. One of the buildings was 412 Vermont Street. And what happened after we occupied that building, the city just came in and arrested everyone. Some of the individuals, more than once, they claim disorderly conduct. They claim a criminal trespass. I say, what's criminal about trying to repair a building? What really is a crime, as far as I'm concerned, is the mayor and the city's failure to do anything about the abandonment problem. And then right after the election, of course, they demolished that building as if to say, well, now the problem has gone away, it's disappeared. But it hasn't. The problem is greater than ever. Claude Dougal is an immigrant from Belize who had attempted to rehabilitate the house at 412 Vermont Street. He had been working for three months and had wanted to turn it into a home for his parents and eight brothers and sisters. Here used to be 412, my house. I was fixing up my bedroom, was over there. My living room was over here. The kitchen was right here. I was fixing up these three rooms first that I could get in. And by being in 412, I would be able to do an hour or two hours work each evening. I've been doing carpentry for about seven years or so. I do from roof, tile, floors, walls, right down. And the building was, was fine. And been. to my knowledge, the building was good. It was pretty strong and, and sound. My first arrest it was very, very close. I, I was making plans. I was dreaming about it. How I'm going to fix this, how I'm going to fix the backyard, what I'm going to fix on the fence, you know? Everything, how I'm going to paint the front and fix it. I was um, already getting that close to the building, right? When I say that, I know it was not mine with papers, but the feeling of ownership was building up with me in me at the time of my first arrest. When I got my first arrest, then, then I, 
I say, well, you know, why did you stop me? You know, why did you stop me from fixing it up? We were arrested. We had to appear in court. We pleaded not guilty. And the judge agreed with us. The judge said not just that you're free, but the judge said, we, I believe you've all taken a reasonable approach because the problem is so great, the situation is so desperate, that you have no, no other choice except try to repair the building to make it livable. Freedom, 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 freedom. The city is not insensitive to the housing crisis in East New York and has sought many solutions to meet the housing shortage. These programs entail renovation of existing property as well as plans for new construction. The city has been working for a number of years to come up with a plan for housing in East New York. First of all, I'd like to talk about our auction pro program. Everybody says, well, when we sell buildings at auction, there's no controlling the price and how do poor people get. But the fact remains that of the 78 buildings that have been sold at auction in East New York, 23 were sold for $5,000 or less. This means that the person only had to have $1,250, and his monthly payments on the mortgage would be about $30 a month. Now, uh, my response is anybody who cannot afford that cannot afford to rehabilitate a vacant building. In the first place, at those auctions, I've seen shells of houses go for $50,000, $60,000. And most of the people who obtain those houses there are speculators. The people in this community cannot afford to go as high as the speculators can mm -hmm. for those houses. The other program that we uh, used in this area about a, begun about a year ago was a lottery which made about 30 vacant buildings available for only $250. And in addition to this, the city put in up to $30,000 a building of money to help buy down the interest rates. This happened to be one of the houses that was in the, the lottery and was, uh, was drawn by the member. And the city appropriate in for these 33 houses a million dollars to rehab these buildings with. Uh, since the lottery has been, been won, the city has not uh, given over the money to rehab this building. The, the man who uh, won this building in the lottery has been uh, fighting with the city since August a year ago. And uh, so far, they have not gotten anywhere with the city with uh, putting the money toward rehabbing this building. All the buildings the city had sold to the lottery as part of its pilot homesteading program still remain abandoned. Guillermo Colon participated in both the lottery and the auction, but did not obtain a house, so for now he has decided to become a squatter. And I still willing to have a home for my family. It's not easy when you try to buy a house and everything is stuck. I mean, you go over here and you go to HPD and you go to the auction, and it's like that. You know, they can see even selling to you because the ocean, most of the time, is the real estate. They're taking the house because uh, we're willing to buy a house for $4,000, like they say, and we can pay $40 a month to have the house. But never forget it. You go over there and the house going over $10,000, $20,000. Now, what happened with the money you need to rebuild the house inside? And that's my problem. And every problem here in East New York and all over here that we suffer, we struggle, and uh, we got no other choice. We have to squat it. We're willing to go to jail because this is illegal, but we still stand it. Because every dream for American people is to fight for our country, for our freedom, and to have a home. While Mr. Cologne, a 49-year-old upholsterer, repairs the first floor of his building, his family lives comfortably on the renovated second floor. He has done most of the work himself and has received no financial support from the city. This house was abandoned for more than 19 years, and people was living drug addict and all these people, all chunky people was living in here. To me, this house is like something special that I never had before, a home to my family. It's, it's nice when you when you have to to work and do something for your own, you know, for your family, you feel proud to do it. And you got some kind of energy that you don't care how long or how many hours you have to work or something that you like it, you know? I mean, and this is love. You know, when something is love, you will, you know, you will, and you, you feel proud to do what you do. 
See, I feel good. I feel happy and I say thanks to God. The city has had several construction programs aimed at revitalizing East New York and its surrounding neighborhoods. In fact, we consider what we're doing now phase two. In phase one, we had developed some housing authority projects as well as some section eight housing uh, when that program was in existence. For phase two, what we're trying to do is take advantage of some of the unique housing characteristics of East New York area. Uh, East New York does afford us an opportunity to do new construction because there is a large amount of vacant lots and vacant land in the area. The city has various programs of dealing with the, the housing problem, but these houses range from uh, 49 to to $60,000 per unit. And uh, we have... Uh, you have to be a person that earning uh, twenty thousand dollars and up per year in order to own one of these buildings. Meanwhile, we have a large percentage of our people that live in this uh, community does not earn this kind of money. The city is not making any provision for these people to to have buildings to live in. The city's largest effort is a collaboration with private investors and the organization of East Brooklyn churches. The Nehemiah plan will be expanded to encompass East New York, but it is economically out of reach for most people in the community and threatens to displace many people who have lived there for years. We're hoping to do approximately 1,550 units of single-family housing uh, with the Nehemiah project. The unique thing about Nehemiah is that it's a real partnership between the city government, the state government, and the community uh, East Brooklyn churches who have uh, all putting in some money and making a program work and produce a large amount of housing. You have to take me and take the house along with me. You understand that? I, my, my belly, the clock is ticking too fast. I haven't got long to be here. And don't uproot me now, because where am I going? Where am I going? Huh? If, if justice is blind, then this is, just, is this the justice they're giving me? After I fought so hard over there? Now they're talking about building a one-family house inferior material, putting my family in there, two families in a one-family house. The Nehemiah plan started off by saying, we want to build on empty lots. Now they went from building to on empty lots to now taking people, acquiring people's property, community. acquiring yeah. this man's furniture store, yeah. acquiring our grocery store. Where will we have the shop? Where will we go? Where will my father go? He's finished paying for his house. Now they want him to pay for another mortgage. Now we have reverends coming and, and dressed up in cloth and giving us prayer while they're taking our homes and, and telling us we have to go. We have people that come here that squat in this community. That's how much they love the community and want it to be built up in the community. I, I admire the squatters. I really admire them because it, they give them, say, hey, I want a home. I'm willing to get in here and I'm willing to work. And they get in there and they really do a good job. Why knock these buildings down? You'd never get another building like it. Homesteading, an opportunity to work for yourself. That's right. That's what they that's ask right. for. That's and right. then if they listen to that, then you'll be able to come up with something that's fine. The squatters are people that have lived in these, that you see these houses now that they couldn't afford. They could not get any help from the city. Good, I'll tell you. The poor will be ready to take these houses over, and all you do is give them a little help, and they won't fix these houses to live in. Yeah, because they're doing they, it on their own They want to do this. Homesteading is a legal program in which we have uh, proposed to the city uh, about giving the, the homes to, to the poor people that they might rehab the buildings. ACORN is trying to force the city to include one to four family houses in its homesteading program. The area does have some smaller multiple dwellings, which historically are among the hardest to, uh, for us to rehabilitate. We agree that all pressure should be put on us to move the buildings back into uh, use as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter that we may have a program for this building that, as slow as we are, it may have taken two years to get to uh, fruition, and now somebody's ready to go in. A squatter says, I don't care that you've waited two years. I don't want to wait. I am taking this building. The squatters are not taking any buildings from anyone. Number one, if those buildings had been slated or if the city had planned to use those buildings for families who were already homeless, they would have had some plans already for it. These buildings are here. They are capable of being rehabilitated. Where families who normally cannot afford to go out and purchase a home, but do have the ability to rehab, will be able to get home that way. Well, 
Well, at first, I didn't like the idea of breaking into this abandoned house. But I have changed my mind after I started thinking about the future of my kids. I will probably pass away soon, so I would like to leave a safe home for my children. I think that this is the only way to do it because so far we haven't got any help from the city. We're not asking the city to give us the house free. We just want them to give us the house at a cost that we can afford. We're fixing this house with the help of our neighbors and the members of ACORN, each one giving us material for what we need. And in the same way, if we have something they might use, we will share it with them because we're all united within the group to help each other. I have two brothers, they're electricians, and um, I have an uncle that's a foreman in a lumber yard, so anything we need for the house, we get it cheaper. You know, we help each other that way. Baylin Roman and her daughter Sandra were repairing a building, but as winter approached, they were forced to stop work due to the lack of heat and electricity. They plan to start again in the spring. The reason why we're doing this is because we need a place to live. Where we are now, we can't afford the rent, and the increases the landlord imposes on us every time he has to fix something. And we're very poor people, living on welfare, with no other means to support us, so we thought it was better to rehab these buildings. After seeing that they are abandoned, with only rats living in them, and that the only people that use them are criminals to do their misdeeds. I think it will look better if we repair these buildings to make them livable for us. Jesus Hernandez feels that the city's plans for his neighborhood are inadequate for people who, like him, have large families. He believes that Acorn's idea of rehabilitating existing houses and turning them into homes may be a solution. And what they're doing is tearing down four and six family buildings and replacing them with prefab one family houses. This might be okay for them, but my point is, the people that are being dislocated, where are they supposed to go? Where can they move? Like it's happening here right now. We have no place to go, especially people like me with large families. They don't want us in Queens. They don't want us in Long Island. Even here, they don't want me. I am being thrown out of my house. So, the only choice left for us is to rehab these buildings. My family is doing everything they can to fix the house so that we can move in. My wife is helping me, and our sons are giving us some money and doing a lot of work. We start working very early in the morning and work until dark when we can't see no more. They are helping me very, very much. I am aware that what I am doing is illegal, but I've been forced to do it. My situation is very difficult. I'm being evicted because the landlord wants the house for someone else. But when I go to a real estate agent looking for a house, not only is the rent too expensive, but when the question comes, how many people will live in the house, they don't want to rent it to me, even if I had the money. And that's why I am taking this house illegally from the city. Yes, squatting, squatting is illegal. So what uh, ACORN has done, rather than to try to, 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 to tell these people that it is, uh, you cannot live here, is to form these people into a group that would impressed to the city that here are people who need a place to live and hopefully that the city would do something about it. ACORN is the people, the people in the community, people who are fighting for the betterment of their community and for a voice. I was told one day about ACORN. I became interested 
and started going to their meetings and learning about their programs of getting houses. I would have never tried to take this house without their support. Because when there is a group of people united supporting you, it is much better than doing it by yourself. And not only that, but I don't know. It would have never crossed my mind to understand that I could do this. And that's how I got to be here, in my home. Because now, this is my home. <laughs> In the winter of 1985, the city relented and proposed to expand its homesteading program to include one to four family houses. The city agreed to hand over 180 units, or approximately 60 houses, including all the houses the acorn squatters had repaired. The city will also provide for $2 million in low interest loans for the homesteaders. ACORN, along with the assistance of other community groups and organizations, will establish a cooperative to oversee the homesteading project and to distribute the units to eligible homesteaders. This cooperative will also provide for additional loans as well as materials for rehabilitation. The city is proceeding cautiously in Brooklyn because it is unsure of the repercussions of its homesteading program as squatting continues to increase in other depressed neighborhoods. But one thing is certain. The squatters of East New York will continue to rebuild their homes and their community.